Welcome back to the the game. I should you probably should screen. Share your screen. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And we have the two most attractive characters in the game right here. Oh yeah, is that true? Yeah, that's right. Here they are. Oh, I like watch stream. The disgusting suitcase and broken glass. In uh, the second part of my session. Yeah, 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 kick, 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 kick. Hey, what's uh, up? It's been like. This is like. So the last session, so we met her, that I got inspired to make Bridget, and then now we're. We just finished chapter six. Oh, she so inspired the... Bridget directly? Yes. Uh, well, sort of. Um, That's funny. Basically, like, she inspired me to find a way to use her song. And I was like, okay, it'll be like some silly girl, like, because she's a silly girl archetype. And I was like, all right, what? Why is she silly, right? She's not actually fucking drunk in the game, I don't think. So like the auto no. brewery syndrome shit was just kind of like a light bulb on my end. Nice. But um, I was inspired to even begin thinking about that because of her. Yeah. Yeah. Last session I was tired as shit, so uh, this time I'm more awake. So and now you're running in circles. Yeah, that's right. Let's talk to her. I can't talk to her. There we go. I don't know much about this shop, but you can still ask me about whatever. You know, that's anything? So what do you think about what happened regarding this case? Oh, I don't know. I guess I think you're the killer, though, Mr. Edgeworth. Could you wear a bra, please? Not in your life. No. I can assure you that I'm here in the shop to prove... To <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. To prove just the opposite. Hey. Honey, wake up. She's a hair monster. Yeah. Oh, see the yawn! Oh my god. And oh then no scrunch! Alright, all our, our face expressions oh. are amazing. Oh. There's another There's another 30 of them for you. She's so gonna be the killer. It's gonna be like, well, we put all this love into her now. Because we know we're not gonna get a fucking chance to later. Yeah, but it was me that got you the permission to look around, you know? So don't forget that, okay? <laughs> Funk. I... God, she really would be a perfect character if she just wear a fucking bra or button up her shirt. I think that adds to it. How am I supposed to thank you properly if you insist on falling asleep? Well, you know what really show your thanks? You see that item for sale over there? Sorry, but you're going to have to make do with my words of appreciation. Here you go. <laughs> oh, I'd love to have this piece of jewelry. Can I have it? N no, you may not. This is a prosecutor's badge. Who? Why did you show it to me? I wanted to prove to you that I really am a prosecutor. That's why you did it, right? People behind the game? Yeah, yeah, it's worth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yes, cake. And that's not possible for a prosecutor like me to commit such a crime as... Uh, it's not. You literally, like, the first game, dude. Well, you know. He I didn't actually commit the, the mic, crime. But NVIDIA AI. I see that I'm just wasting my time with Cousin Hare here. Cousin Hare? Is that like a pop culture reference? I don't get it. Who knows? Uh, maybe Adam's Family, like the hair thing? Oh, I, d I never watched that. I don't remember if that thing's called Cousin Hair. I don't think it is. Oh, show it the statue. So what is that? Are you gonna give it to me? Oh, I'm not supposed to accept any presents. Unless they're really worth something. Yeah, Miss Rhoda said this piggy bank was in the shop. Don't you find her a tiny bit sussy? I don't think I can say either way yet. There's not enough evidence to convince me that she was lying about anything back there. Are you sure about that? No. You're gonna give me the grape juice foot crunch. I'll give you some grape juice. <laughs> anyway. I see. Absolutely. Um, this is all the shit we've ex inspected already, right? We didn't look at any of this, I don't think, did we? Oh, is this a completely new area? Well, that's from this display case door shattered all over the floor. And it looks like there's nothing on display inside either. Hmm, wait. Actually, I think there is something. 
What's this? A mini captain's hat? I guess this is a new area. There's just another yeah, we shattered just, like, ship. We just saved as soon as we got here. Stuffed toys, just like the one Miss Meal is holding, are on display here. They're relatively cheap, which explains why they're displayed so haphazardly. How about it, Mr. Edgeworth? You know you want one, too. They're great for when you're stressed. Why do I envision stuff animal abuse when she says that? <laughs> There's a wide selection of souvenirs for sale in these display cases. You know what I'd suggest? Sorry, but I have no intention of buying souvenirs on this trip. Okay, and how about you buy something for me then? As a present! I can't think of a single reason why I'd want to buy you anything. <laughs> all the- all the men, like... Oh, he's gay. Well, shit. But I've had my eye on that pennant for such a long time. Try paying some attention to me when I ask you something and then we'll talk. Falls asleep. He has standards. G give, a, give a man that. Yeah, I know. Even even if he's, like, not gay, he has standards. I know. What are these things? Well, those are a company's completely original line of suitcases. They're Someone's hideous. Gonna they brought one on the ship, but it's gonna be like, no, oh, these are original. They're practically flying out the door. That's how popular they are. Can you imagine a suitcase that's, like, eight times as wide as your body and it's, like, yeah, as it's tall as you are? I guess, I mean, in a world with triple-decker elevator planes. Yeah. You should buy one and see how you like it. You won't regret it. Perhaps that's how things work in this flight, but in the real world you should try, then buy. No way. Either way, it doesn't really matter. True. Either way, why would anyone buy a suitcase after they've boarded the plane? That's actually a really funny point I should have thought of first. Anyway, see that? Just look at all <clears> the <throat> Mr. iFly heads painted on there. Cute company mascot, isn't he? They're painted on with a lot of care. Doesn't he look like he's about to jump out at you? This is certainly making something jump inside my stomach. Aw, uh, I guess there's no fooling your refined taste. You look like you really wanted to get one. I thought I was gonna finally make my first sale, but you saw right there. <laughs> really? Glad that's done, though. Never make me try to give you a sales pitch ever again, okay? But I never showed any interest in it to begin with. <laughs> it really is pretty horrible, isn't it? You want to know something? This suitcase was designed by Miss Rhoda. Miss Tenero designed this. Yeah, it was a company-wide contest. Um, well, it does have a very sharp design sense. <laughs> sharp? Like stinky sharp cheddar, maybe. I really have no idea why the bigwigs decided to go with it. It's so... Ugh. Miss Tanira designed this, did she? It's definitely not what I would have expected. Ah! You okay? I'm fine. Please, watch yourself, Miss Mio. Letting a suitcase freely roll around has got to be a safety violation. So, the vibes I'm getting from her, though, genuinely... Um, it's kind of like the Cephalia thing, where it's like you want to like her, and then she like says something really fucked up and mean, and you're like, that's that's not good. Yeah. Like, or, like at the end of the last session, she was really rude to Tenero too, and it's like that's that's usually the killer sign. Here, I'll put it back. Damn, that was pretty fucking impressive. I know. Oh yeah. I guess she rolled it without like... her hands. She used her psychic yeah. powers. She, Which I guess she, uh, all women can become invisible and glide, so, you know, you can probably push suitcases. Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, we're supposed to keep that one a secret, but... Right, I guess Bloodborne kind of revealed that one. So this display case is a row of lifesavers and life vests for sale. We sell a lot of those when there's some kind of accident or something. <laughs> <laughs> some people buy them even when nothing's going on. How bad I, Mr. Edgeworth, can I buy one? I sense that the shop is one shopper away from getting sued. Yeah, it sure is. Beautiful flowers and a beautiful arrangement. I feel cleansed just by looking at them. That's a very sweet-hearted line for Edsworth. Mr. Edsworth, you're getting pollen all over. Oh, excuse me. There might be, like, a evidence point to make, but I would just make sure you 
examined everything. Let's see what kind of logics we got. Eureka! Eureka! Um, I mean, you, like, there's really not much you can say other than, like, oh, maybe the suitcase broke the glasses, but you can't really, like, say that. Yeah, it's not the hardest thing to say in the world. I mean, unless the captain hats are supposed to be on the statue, maybe. Yeah, why not? No. It was a dud. Or you know what? It probably goes on the on the plushie, but we don't have the plushie yet. So there's probably more to look at. You also might have to show her more shit. Not a shit to show her, I think. Well, you didn't literally do everything. Sometimes, like I, mean, I don't think we're that stuck yet. But... No. Can I examine more of the glass? Just the hat. Yeah, and those are on the plushies. We have we don't see any of the statues, so we can't really say they're supposed to be on the statues. We can't see any of that shit on the floor? Wait, yeah, I think you can. Look, look down. Nah, it's just oh, the no. life vests. What about wait, what about the no, it's just the plushie. All kinds of luxury brand name merchandise for sale in this display case. And the line didn't just in such a manner as to scream by me to any passers by. Thanks, Hedgeworth. What about the shit on the ground in front of the plant? Um, that is the same thing as the plant. Ah, so it is. And you couldn't, like, there's nothing behind the suitcase? It'll probably roll again if you make it. I'm a suitcase. Question suitcase me, is Adore. designed by Miss Tenero. That's one sharp design. Okay. Well, either something we're not seeing or... I mean, you could just say statue glasses, I guess, but... Does the statue wear glasses? No, no, no. But, like, if, like, if it hit the person or something. I don't remember where we found glasses. Oh, oh, yeah, actually, that's... Yeah, obviously. Yeah, it is the victim's glasses. Nuts! Alright. Dog, did you see that one? I hit it on the mark! Anyway, that's I mean, my I mean, laundry. I don't know, try, try the hat and the statue. Oh, laundry. Okay. Hat and the statue, sure, let's try it. Y'all connect that bad boy and I'll go make some laundry. This looks like the... You make a good point, but no. Which is a... Very welcome addition to these games, gotta say. It's like, yeah, hat might be part of the statue, but we have nothing tying it to it, so never mind. She was right, I think. No, I think this is the you make a good point, but also no. Hmm. 
Because it didn't say, Eureka. That probably used to be on the piggy bank's head. Let's give it a go and see. Actually, they don't say Eureka during this part when you're combining logic. No. You say oh, Eureka when you make uh, a connection between like an item and something else. Oh, okay. okay. I believe this piggy bank was forcibly removed from this display case. Does this mean that the killer broke the glass to get at it? Eh? Really? Don't tell me you don't know what things go where in the shop. Well, I don't. Miss Rhoda's in charge of this place. So come on, how should I know anything? I sense that further inspection of this display case is needed. She can probably zoom in on it now. I won't rest until I've inspected every suspicious looking nook and cranny. I won't rest until I've said that line at least 30 times across the course of this game. Is this the same as the one portrayed by the statues around the elevator? Yeah, that's a paperweight of the founder of iFly Airlines, Mr. Hugo iFly. On the bottom shelf, we have the cute one, the middle shelf, the realistic one. And on the top shelf, that's the floral version. F floral? Are you sure about that? Let me guess, you just said the first thing that came to your mind, right? Looks like I hit that bullseye. The glass in this door is broken. Perhaps it was the killer who broke it in order to take the piggy bank. But it's a bit odd that the inside of the case is so devoid of glass shards. Plus, the glass broke rather cleanly. Ah! What is it? I I touched the glass and I cut my finger. Hurts, Mr. Edgeworth, it hurts. Please tell me you can deal with such a minor cut on your own. The glass in this door is broken. I'm going to keep inspecting this so that she keeps getting hurt because I hate her. iFly Airlines related books line the shelf. The history of iFly Airlines. The future of iFly Airlines. Seven wonders of iFly. Flight on. iFly Airlines. Working name, Go You Airlines. I love flying! The titles make it very clear they won't be making the top seller list anytime soon. Thanks, Edgeworth. You're, you're really helping me out here. <laughs> God damn it. Really, you can't. Do you have to, like, interact with the fucking handle to open it? I swear to God. For security, there's a lock in this display case. Miss Mio, if I may ask you about this lock. Just reach inside of it, dumbass. No. Um, the one who's in charge of the shop is Miss Rhoda, so she's got the keys to all the display cases. I see. Oh, I bet you want to buy something. You want me to go get the key from her? No, that's all right. Also, I can reach my hand in. I, I got to do something. Yeah. Oh. Right, that's how that works. Well, what do we have? I really, like, this, this, this shouldn't be that, uh, like... To me, it really is just, yep, the statue was here, anyways. What, what's her testimony, actually? Oh, okay. It's unrelated. It really might just be saying, yeah, the stat statue, the statue was here, because there's a missing spot, or something like that. It could. It could be that easy. Now check the photo. This one? Yeah, maybe there's like something. Doesn't. Oh yeah, we can kind of just look around now. The hat on its head was found inside a display case in the in-flight shop. I wonder if that fact is any bearing on this case. Yeah, so I just present the statue. Because it's like, oh, there's a missing missing spot. This is where he would say Eureka. If you we were correct. Eureka! Ah. Eureka! So it is. There's definitely something very unusual about this. About what? If the killer had broken the glass to get it, Mr. iFly Bank... 
There should be shards of glass inside the case itself. Oh, I mean, that too, I guess. Oh, I see. I guess it would be like that. They could have easily just, like, you know, grabbed the piggy bank, reached their arm in. Well, but if it's locked, right? Yeah. However, there's not a single piece of glass inside the display case. Nope. No, there isn't. Which means that the glass was broken from the inside out. The piggy bank must have fallen over from the turbulence right into the glass. Through the glass bit. Yeah, that's for sure. There's so much glass all over the floor. I'm willing to bet that this hatch was knocked off at its time, too. Eh? That's nice. That is nice. Which leads me to believe, as I pull a cookie from the jar, the box, the, the thing that holds, the receptacle that holds the cookies. Wait, how, many, how long ago did you buy those cookies? You said there's 12 of them? 24 of them. 24, okay, how did you buy them? Yesterday. Oh. I thought we had that conversation multiple days ago and there was only 12. I was like, damn, they fucking lasted that long. That's like better no. willpower than I have. That the killer took the Mr. I fly from here after the turbulence. Take your power naps on your own time, Miss Meal, and listen to when I'm talking. What? The murder occurred before the turbulence. Drools this piggy bank out as the murder weapon. So you mean the bank's not the real murder weapon? It's a fake? Yes, at this point, there's a very real possibility. Um, but and what if when the killer went to take Mr. Ifly, they broke the glass by accident? Hmm. The space case is locked, so it's highly unlikely. Yeah, but there's one person who could have. Oh, and who would that be? The red herring I'm putting Sus on, of course. Miss Rhoda! Of course. I mean, she's the one in charge of this place, so she has the keys to everything. Miss Rota Tanera, hmm? About the shop. I cut my finger on those bad pieces of glass. Don't blame the glass for something you did for yourself. Just be more careful. Thank you. Maybe you, you're the one walking all over broken glass. You're the one who has your inordinately large finger pointing. His hand is bigger than her boobs. Yeah, he kind of has a bit of yaoi hand syndrome. Doesn't That's he? not even yaoi hand syndrome. That's like fucking gigantism. <laughs> you sure you're okay? I have <sighs> shoes on. I'm fine. In the glass I walk on, I crush like this. <laughs> <laughs> That's... Nice. I am Sigma. <laughs> Please be careful around the display case, okay? I'm not letting it get hard. Compared to the glass around my feet, the inside of the case is nothing to be afraid of. After all, Your no glass feet, fragments huh? appear to have ended up inside. Then I guess even you can tidy up the case, right? Perish the thought! Thanks. No. We should do that more often. What, yell, perish the thought? No, talk to the people when you're investigating shit. Oh, I never yeah. do. Yeah. So this will probably have some logic with the turbulence. Bonk. Yes, there's definitely something wrong here. Z's. What? What's with the sudden yelling? Tell me, Miss Meal, don't you think there's something strange about these suitcases? Oh, well, sure. They totally ooze strange. Like the color inside. That's not what I'm talking about. Now pay attention. Ah, you're scaring me, Mr. Edgeworth. Uh, sorry. <laughs> these suitcases are lined up a bit too prim and proper. Yeah, they look a bit uptight, don't they? Like you. I guess they take after the creator. <laughs> Again, that's not what I meant, Miss Meal. Don't you find it unusual that these cases are the only thing undisturbed by the turbulence? Never mind, I'd sooner find an answer by inspecting these suitcases myself. Upon closer inspection, they really are quite hideous. <laughs> I wonder how Miss Roto would have reacted if she'd heard what you just said. Can you go tell it to her while I film it so I can watch it every night while I fucking masturbate? 
What's wrong? She makes a good point. It would be wise of me to watch what <laughs> I say be, out loud. It would be good to record that. It would be wise of me to watch what I say out loud, Miss <laughs> Meal. <laughs> What's this? I've spotted the something that's not quite right. It's the last 30 <laughs> seconds of dialogue. <laughs> what is so unusual about this suitcase? Uh, I don't know, the fucking stoppers on the wheels. Yeah. But there's no stoppers on that one. Well, that's the problem, right? Yeah, I figured you thought that. It, oh, do you have to like you have to pick the absence of them. Never said the design yeah. was odd. Please don't give me that attitude. Oh, I can't let her get me all riled up. Time to come and take another good hard look. I mean, if it's not though, no, it's gotta be though, right? There's something very peculiar, uh, peculiar about these wheels. Uh, as in? As in. There are no stoppers in place in these. Without stoppers, one would think that the turbulence would have sent it flying. And? Uh, and so it is very likely that the suitcase was placed here after we hit that turbulence. Let's take a closer look at it, shall we? How much are we going to zoom in? Let's look at the microscopic makeup of the synthetic rubber. Mr. Edgeworth, you're like inside of my clothing. Yes, I need to take a yeah. closer look. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I won't be satisfied until I've expected every suspicious nook and cranny. <laughs> <laughs> it would appear to be unlocked. Let's take a look at what's inside. Edgeworth, stop. A piece of cloth. Oh, well that's not suspicious at all. And it's soaked with blood. Ah, uh, it's... It's blood. It appears that this suitcase is very strongly tied to a murder after all. Nice. So explain this to me. What does this suitcase have to do with the murder? I believe it's pretty safe to say that the killer uses suitcase in some manner. So it has to move something, perhaps? Eh, but aren't you just talking about the cloth then? That alone is too small. Wheels... A larger item would be needed to make move what I'm thinking of. The thing I believe the killer uses suitcase to transport is... A body! That's right! Something that would fit inside a suitcase that is also covered in blood. Sounds like a dead body, doesn't it? Also, the suitcase is fucking enormous. That was like my first thought. Like, this thing is yeah. way too freaking big just to be like some dumbass suitcase. Yeah, it makes sense. But, but... In light of this, I'd say Mr. Hicks was moved into the elevator from someplace else. Which means that the murder was committed in an entirely different location. You know, I have to admit, if she is the murderer, she is in a very fun scenario where you just have this asshole figuring out, like, your entire p strategy that you tried to keep hidden. She's like, oh boy, this is, like, both exciting because they're, like, thinking that the killer is smart, but also I'm going to get fucking caught. This, that's just Danganronpa, because there's, like, every single trial, the killer is always just, like, there the whole time, and yeah. also trying to... Well, also, Phoenix Wright, in general, as well. Well, but most of the trial, the killer isn't even present. They appear pretty damn fast. Right, but, like, like still, like, they're not, like, you know, you're not getting dialogue from them, like between all the discussions. That's, in that's real like, life, it's not very out of the ordinary to find out that it took place in a completely different state, and you have to go, like, track down interstate police to yeah. go find the person. Phoenix Wright games are all very conveniently in the same location. Yeah, but, like, just my point was that, it, like, with Diane Rumpf specifically, like, you have to listen to and refute literally every single evidence point. Yeah. Like, it's not like if there's, like, a witness that's, like, you know, that, that um, isn't you being testified. You can't just, like, objection from the fucking stands. I mean, they do sometimes, but... I mean, as as that meme said, there are two characters that share a brain cell, and it's, uh, it's Hajime, and it's uh, Gamer Girl, and everyone else yeah. has none. <coughs> so... Yeah. And, th and then... And then she dies, and, uh, spoilers, uh, she dies, <laughs> and then I guess, um... Hajime well, gets the full brain cell, and that's why his hair turns yeah. gold. Yes, yeah, so it turns away. Yeah. It turns away, whatever the fuck it does. 
you know, I was talking to someone who's complaining about how, like, you know, like, Shonen Epic, the last, like, trial of every Danganronpa game is, but honestly, I, I kind of live for it. Like, That's a big-ass meme. It's a meme, but it's also, like, I, I can g accept it as, like, a guilty pleasure. I just noticed that uh, part of the bottom of the top... You know, I just fixed this. Why is it cutting off the bottom of the screen? I'm mad. My, my Pokemon Rangers probably fucked up as all hell. I think the, the Mario Bros, or the Mario Baseball, is just a single screen. I'm, right. I'm bad at doing two screens. I'm as well. So you're saying that after moving the body into the elevator, I, I mean the killer, I mean the killer. You did it, didn't you? No. No, it was, sh it was, I found this shell card. Please advance the line, Mr. Edgeworth. As soon as I fix X-Split. Just I by will be OBS. satisfied until I fixed every suspicious nook and cranny. Yeah, this game is this fucking program is nothing but suspicious nooks and crannies that don't make any sense. Anyway, the killer brought the suitcase in here and just left it. Exactly. What is it? Um, nothing. Just that you're a fucking idiot loser. I was thinking about what Miss Rada said about coming here for something. Mm. It's probably her. Excuse yeah. me, Mr. Edgeworth? Yeah. I wanted to give you a bit more time, but I'm afraid I wasn't able to convince the captain. I'm very sorry, Mr. Edgeworth, but the captain feels that he's allowed you ample time. He says that he'd appreciate it if you could wrap it up here and return to your seat. Or it's just the fucking captain. Like, I mean, he's he's piloting the fucking plane. Props to him if he can like put it into <laughs> autopilot and do all this bullshit while turbulence is uh, yeah, going no. on. I, I was thinking it might be like the fucking founder guy they keep talking about because like they, they he gets too much of a mention to get reference like to not be important, and so like maybe he's like on, on this flight or something. Also, I like how we're calling them the captain. I like I guess this ship is so fucking big it has a captain, not even a pilot. No mention I mean, of a co pilot. Actually, I think captain is different from pilot. Maybe. So there's a I, captain I, I, as well as two pilots? I think so. Like, the I'm captain of a vessel does not directly steer the ship, I suppose, but. Uh, let's see. Airplane captain. I mean, that that's why I over the line to say this is your oh, captain. Oh, no, speaking. no, look at that. The captain is the pilot in the left seat. Yeah. <laughs> so, who the f. Do we even have a co pilot? We have yeah, probably to. Pilot too. I guess it's the, uh, important to get a mention. Yeah, well, because the main pilot has like, is that's why they're the captain. They have more authority on a plane than the co-pilot. Yes. Yeah. Anyway, I actually think they have the same authority. It's just that like they're co-piloting that one. Okay. I understand his sentiments, however, if I'm not allowed to complete my investigation, the crime scene may become contaminated by the time we land. If I must stop, then I insist I be allowed to oversee the preservation of the two sites. Under your supervision, of course. If that's your only condition, then I believe we can accommodate your wishes. I'm here to assist you in any way that I can, Mr. Edgeworth. Ow! Oh, your sharp, pointy hat has stabbed me. Oh, and, uh... Sounds like fun. We can camp out and watch over everything together. I found proof that the real crime scene was not in the lounge. And I have enough evidence to prove myself to be innocent of any wrongdoing. And yet, regarding what Miss Mia reminded me of, Miss De Niro, I can't allow my investigation in here. The truth must come to light. So, I'm guessing they're gonna land so that, like, one or more characters not on this plane can appear for dialogue. I don't even think they have to land. Well, they're I mean, doing we have a... that, though, because he doesn't have any more time to investigate, so they're preserving the scene and then landing, right? Yeah. Yep. Look at that. Is that pain? No, it's not pain. Okay. That's what I thought for a sec. Wait a minute. 
Oh my god. They were roommates. No. Wait, am I missing something? Yeah. I can see your cursor, so... Oh, you can? Yeah. Um... Uh -huh. Um. Uh, didn't uh, didn't a certain somebody just recently post? Oh no no! I'm the one who saw that video. What is it? That's that's the guy from Trial Three Game One. I think. What what guy? What the? The disgusting what? man child. No, 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 I think please. that's him. No, please. I think that's him. No, 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 no. It looks very similar. No, it's just a back angle. It's just a... Oh, no. I know that once we had landed, I'm supposed to let the local police take over. And thanks to Mr. Nero and Miss Meal, I was able to preserve the crime scene. But I just can't shake it. I wasn't able to talk with Miss Tenero in private. So I'm left wondering just what she was up to. Why'd she do what she did? There must be a way for me to continue my investigation. Oh, here we Been go. Been expecting you, Miles Edgeworth. Yes, the fucking music. I'm gonna fucking... Francisca, I thought you were still in Germany. Oh, sorry. She just leaves. <laughs> <laughs> the music, like... Plays backward. <laughs> I go where I am needed. No, you don't. We wanted you for the past four games. Fuck you. And wherever there are criminals to be caught. Her name is Francisca von Karma. The daughter of my mentor Manfred von Karma. She, like myself, is a prosecutor. Are you heading up this case? It would be a bit of a relief if you are. Don't you try to flatter me, Miles Edgeworth. I'm placing you under arrest. What? It's quite frustrating, actually. I had hoped to exact my revenge on you in a different venue. But I'll have to take what I can get. I never thought I'd see the day when a disciple of the House of Von Karma would become a criminal. Give you no shame. But it's all been a big misunderstanding. I didn't kill the victim. Misunderstanding? I heard all about the murder all over the police radio from the captain himself. You waited for the victim on the first floor and then beat him to death. Francisco, do you honestly believe that I killed a man? Mm -hmm. Yes. Suppose I should reserve judgment until I, after I have investigated this for myself. I can put your arrest on hold until then. That's as it should be. Ha! I don't need a lecture on how to perform my duties from you of all people. To be perfect in every way. Fulfillment of that creed alone is all I strive for. Well, I have my own creed which I must fulfill, so why don't we solve this together? To get going, the crime scene awaits. Don't you dare leave town. Trust me, I have no intention to do so. Detective Gumshoe! Yeah, yeah uh, wait, who was Gumshoe? You can, you can, I was, but you can do him, it's fine. Now you can keep doing That's, Gumshoe. But it, I'm afraid it might be a back and forth of just me talking to me. <laughs> I think that's okay, because there's plenty yes, of characters. Sir. Too slow. Plus, I think that's funny. <laughs> Ow. Oh. Listen up. I'm leaving you in charge of watching this man. Don't mess up, understand? M Mr. Edgeworth, I'm supposed to guard him? A simple yes or no, detective? Ah, yes, sir. Understood, sir. You just leave it to me. Miles Edgeworth. If you interfere with my investigation, I'll arrest you on the spot. Are we clear? Now then, if you'll excuse me. That's why I figured it would happen. Good to see you again, Mr. Edgeworth, sir. Boy, am I glad to see you're okay. They wouldn't give us both cool characters in one. That's not how Phoenix Wright works. You get yeah. one or the other until the final trial. Thank you, Detective. I believe in you, sir. You can lean on me. I'll get you through this. I have to admit, I'm a bit curious as to what Francisca is up to. Maybe I should ask the good detective. Very well, in that case, I have a few questions for you. Have I... Have I talked about how both of the Great Revivals are my favorite fucking themes in the franchise? I said Hotline of Fate might be, but no, it, it's just it's just like Great Revival. Don't you fucking dare talk to me. Mm -hmm. 
looking from behind. I think I've seen this man somewhere before. At Troth. In Soviet Russia, low flag lunchboxes eat Jew. If found it, lol. <coughs> oh, I feel a wave of creative powers coming on. It's over 9,000, lols. For the next late movie, it's going to be the Stiff Samurai Warrior of Neo Old Tokyo versus the World Samurai Champion of Earth. Gonna rock so many boxes. So the Steel Samurai is finally getting movie. Okay, it doesn't look like he's important. Just a just a small reference. Wait, is this the kid I then? What a view of the planes taking off. Besides the turbulence, they're really not all that bad as a mode of transportation. This child seems to be happily enjoying the sight of so many planes. Well, I'd love to take a run down that runway. Oh, the youth today, so much potential yet so misguided. Looks like he's unrelated. I considered disconnecting for the joke, but I wasn't sure if you had your sound on for that. Uh, I always do, I think. Do, 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 this is Come shoot, Steam is great. Like... Yeah. So, how's the initial investigation going? We just shipped the body off to the coroner's office. We're taking statements now, sir. That sounds like Francisca. She was always good at quick responses to a case. I'd say she was a little too quick, sir. Oh, how so? Uh, um, hmm. I rushed on over as soon as I got word of the affair, sir. But uh, somehow, when I got here, Miss Von Karma was already here barking out orders at everyone. It was kind of creepy, as though she knew there had been a murder or something, and had come in advance to await your flight's arrival. It is sort of odd. She did show up rather quickly and out of the blue. She did it! Plus, I still don't know why she's here in America. There must be some backstory of all this. Miss Von Karma just kind of popped up at the prosecutor's office about a week ago, sir. Something about chasing down leads related to a certain incident. No details? It's kind of top secret, so she can't talk about it, even with me, sir. It's, it's the generic, uh past trial from, you know, one or more years ago in every game, sir. Knowing her, the only, t the only type of, the only, fuck, knowing her, the only type of talking she likes to do is with her whip. I don't know why that was so difficult for me. Plus, I doubt the top secret parts was what stopped her from talking to you, detective. Although I wonder if her case has anything to do with mine. Anyway, that's about all the info I have, sir. We should find out more as we investigate. Yes, it is high time to resume my investigation. Started with talking to the people involved in this case afresh. Oh, that's the lunch li This is just a, like, reunion of the Chapter 3 Yeah, characters. it's like they're just taking every chance they can to, like, sort of fan service characters in. Yeah, I just, like, that's the only one who stuck out to me. Uh, like, of course, that's the only one I remember. The lunch lady girl is cute, but I just don't remember her at all. Not bad. It's gone big enough to warrant its own brand shops. No, oh, that's a weird voice you're doing, sir. I've always wanted to give their steak lunch a try. Also, it looks like it isn't actually with? her, it's the branch. I think no. that was Edgeworth the first one. I recommend our airport special world flagged lunch boxes, only available for a limited time. We have a variety of looking fucking gumshoe. <laughs> we have a variety of lunch boxes made up to look like different countries' flags. Really want one that badly, Detective? Why don't you go ahead and buy one? Is that okay, sir? Thanks. All right, then I'm really gonna get one. Here I go. Hey, excuse me, missile. Take a Star Spangled Banner lunchbox, please. I hope he's aware that the most expensive one on the menu. Of course ah, it's... fuck. What have I done? I uh, selected good. the second state. So talk to the guy on the. Let's make sure I accidentally don't load a state by accident. Accidentally. Sure. There you go. On well, my modified DS. Talk oh, to fuck. a totally. Oh my god, dude. <laughs> Listen, now, now it's just suddenly a problem. Okay. Yes, sir. <laughs> Come shoot, get out of here. Come shoot, you fuck. Are you good? <laughs> this man was in first class with me. He was quite shaken up at the whole affair. Pretty scared too if I got caught up in a murder investigation, sir. 
I, I did it. I made it- oh. <laughs> I made it the whole flight. I'm not scared of turbulence anymore. Ugh, this life vest is proof I made it alive. It's now my prized possession. How could you just take that from the plane? I had to buy it. It's okay, Mr. Edgel, if it's got nothing to do with the murder, at least. What if yeah, I strangled- Yeah, buy the life vest, so... Yeah, what if he strangled someone with it? Oh, yeah, there you go. Yo, is that fucking, like, like, a doe? Hello? <laughs> like, it's like he dyed his hair black. I don't know who he is, dead. but I believe I've seen him star in the hit movie Top Gun. This, the, it's the captain. So, you must be the captain. <laughs> Why, yes, I am. And who might you be? I am the prodigy prosecutor, Francisca von Karma, and I have a few questions for you. Uh, don't you dare, Captain, getting friendly with another woman. I'll never forgive you if you do. What are you talking about? I only have eyes for you, my dear Cammy. I wouldn't bet money on our dear Captain to be much of a reputable person. Sure you don't want to ask the Captain some questions, sir. The song is such a fucking trip. I know. He was in the cockpit the entire time. I highly doubt he would know anything of use. Anyway, I'd like to leave that type of witness to Franciscan or whip. <laughs> Just fuck these people. <laughs> no. I love the gumshoe poses. Like they're so good. They can really make them a lot more expressive. Oh, we have to spend time with these losers. <laughs> they can make them a lot more expressive, like on the. Oh, uh, now see here. Ah. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm sorry. How long do you intend to hold me? Is it possible for me to be the criminal? I told you. Mr. LeBlanc. Oh, it's you. Tell this man to stop stopping me from stopping. I mean, going. Time is money. I don't even have one second of wasteful time to spend. <laughs> you motherfucker. <laughs> Did you finish taking a statement yet? Yep, all done, sir. I do not concern if you are not done examining the cargo hold. I want my cargo back. If you make a single scratch on my art, you will pay. All right, what sort of art? Mr. LeBlanc is an art dealer, so he's got a bunch of artwork down in cargo hold, sir. There's practically a mountain of them, large and small. From folk costumes to stone statues, I saw all kinds of art. Folk costumes. Speaking of which, Mr. LeBlanc's hat looks kind of like that other piece of cloth. It does. And I would present that. Yeah. He's gonna be so pissed. Mr. LeBlanc, can you please take a look at this for me? Oh, it's a Borginian cloth. As I suspected, your hat is made of the same material, I suppose? Yeah, of course! This fabric's so famous, orders come from all over the seas for more! Okay, so it might not be tied. And this is the cargo you were talking about earlier? Yeah, no, no! My cargo's got this much, much more, much, much many more, my much gigantic! Like my dick! You detective, when can I have my cargo moved? You can get your cargo back when we're done investigating, pal. The stubbornness of you police is no good. There's other things that are no good as well, but yeah, we're not gonna get into that. Heartbreaking. The worst person you know made a great point. And it's no good that the attendant refuses to exit the attendant's room, too. That attendant. I wonder if he's talking about Miss Tenero. You! I can say you have the guts to show me a piece at a time like this, but from a single glance I can already tell it is mostly worthless. Ha. Huh. This has much more value as a piece of non-art, I assure you. You look like you have something to say! Perhaps you are thinking, like, casting pearls before swine? Actually hit the nail on the head for once. Um, that's a phrase I've never heard before. You ever heard, uh, throwing pearls before pigs? Nope. It's a good one. What is it? Do you have some use for me? You seem to understand I have no time to waste. Let me put it another way. Le temps c'est le agent. I, I think also, like, since he fucks up most of his lines, it's not quite correct what he said. Right, right, right. But, but I, I, I've heard, like, similar. 
it's like showing off something really rich to a group of people that just does not get it. Gotcha. Maybe another language will get through my head. Understood you perfectly fine in English. Ah, fuck. What is it? Now, the fucking, like, five rings on each finger is what really sells this this guy's thing. Like, a fucking, like, stuck up prick. It's not just the rings. They almost seem to form, like, knuckles for him to, like, punch almost, people with. yeah. It feels, like, too strong. What did you mean by that, Mr. Attendant, Mr. LeBlanc? She was taken into the attendance room for an interview. And then they still have not come out. They make no sign of coming out either. This game uses the word either a lot. I was finished with my own interview much earlier, much quicker than her. There's a lot of things like that that I kind of overuse too, probably. But... Why is Miss Tanera's interview the only one that's taking up so much time? Oh, hi. Miles Edgeworth, you were given free reign to examine the plane, weren't you? Oh, look. She has to be here, otherwise Emily will get bored. Yes, I was able to obtain the cooperation of the flight attendants. I'm so happy to see she, her get new emotions and shit. They're, they're pretty much the same ones that she was doing in court. But it's done differently. Uh, from a different angle, kind of. Speaking of attendants, I'd like to speak with Mr. Nero. I wonder if you might grant me permission to enter the flight attendant's room. Before I do, you still have to <clears throat> clear up a few issues surrounding your own circumstances. I understand. You may have tricked those attendants with your sophisticated talking, but you can't pull the wool over my eyes, Miles Edgeworth. Francisca's logic. Let's not complicate things and go with the most obvious solution. Conclusion. The scene of the crime was here in the very lounge the body was discovered. From the time the victim was seen calling for an attendant until his body was found, the only person in this lounge the entire time was you, Miles Edgeworth. This, unmistakably, makes you the likeliest suspect. Hmph. The likeliest suspect, Francisca? Do you have a problem with that? No, but it's not like if you to use such vague wording. You're usually a bit more absolute. I'm simply trying to watch out for you. Or is it my kindness too hard for you to comprehend? Yes, Love me, Edgeworth! No. Damn it. Thank you, but your leniency is unnecessary, for I will prove my innocence soon enough. If I want to continue my investigation, I'll have to break her line of logic fast. So you kind of have to say no to Nero's the likeliest suspect. Uh, that's the press button. Don't you think you're being a bit rash by simply declaring me the culprit? I'd like my affairs to be simple and perfect. I'll show you the meaning of both <clears> when <throat> I finish the whole thing within three minutes. Hey, you say it like you're cooking a pack of instant noodles. <laughs> I won't allow even three seconds of useless testimony to be uttered in my presence. I say she hasn't changed a bit. But I won't allow her to send me to prison so easily. The scene of the crime was here. Very loud the body was discovered. So tell me, Francisco, do you know all there is to know about the crime scene? I know all that I need to know in order to arrest you. And nothing more. Are you saying there's more I need to know? Ah, why did you whip me, sir? Sorry, Scruffy. My hand must have slipped. <laughs> it would appear that Francisca doesn't have all the facts of this case yet. At the time the victim was seen calling for an attendant until his body was found. What do you mean by seen? Please stop pretending like you don't know. It's insulting. Obviously, I'm talking about how Mr. Hicks was seen calling for an attendant at 5 a.m. And then, from the time after that call until the body was found... Hmm. While it's true that I was in the lounge the whole time, that fact alone does not make me the criminal. Did the screen share lag and die? No, it's good. Okay. Anytime a person goes silent for more than five seconds, I'm like, oh, good. Discord did the thing. <laughs> oh, it's so good to hear that. <laughs> we'll see about that at the conclusion of this investigation. However, there is one thing that even you must admit at this time. Hold 
Under the circumstances, I suppose I can agree with that, that I am the most likely suspect. But I believe in you, sir. I don't think you did it. This fun karma's gotta believe that too, right? I mean, you two are like siblings. Ow! Oh. Quiet, Scruffy. Even if we were related by blood, there's no guarantee that he's not a criminal. Francisca. I demand to see some proof that you are not the guilty party. A likely suspect, hmm? What a roundabout euphemism. But it would appear that she doesn't know yet. She doesn't know! <laughs> About the new evidence that we acquired and where we acquired it. I'll take care of the gaps in logic one hole at a time. So! Let's go. Let's go. Let's not complicate things. Go with the most obvious thing. So it's either the most, like, likeliest suspect one or the, uh seen calling for an attendant because like I'm not sure if she has the updated info on like that timing being wrong well actually due to a person's testimony well that so that's what she believes because of that testimony but then if you I think the uh what the, the like the, the schedule right or something I don't know. maybe not the schedule does fuck with this a little bit. It's been a little bit. Yeah, so like we, pr I think we proved it wasn't at 5 a.m. The first thing that goes out of your mind when you take a break for a little bit is the time. Yeah. We should definitely pick this back up next week if we don't finish it. Yes. Anyway, let's read this issue again. Yeah. Um, let's not complicate things. Okay, that's just fart. You might be showing the suitcase to okay. the last statement to say, like, no, it's Rhoda, even though it isn't. Okay. No, actually, yeah, because, like, the, the Cami thing, Cami's statement is actually correct. She's the one who corrected LeBlanc on the timing. So yeah. it's actually, <clears throat> we have to, oh, oh, the scene of the crime is the, oh, so you show the, the, the suitcase. Yeah. Or maybe you show the, the, the cloth specifically. I don't know. One of those. I guess the suitcase is what was used, but. We're, that's like a little too far ahead. We're just I trying don't to prove. It is. <clears throat> I don't think it is. You're proving that it's not the uh, the crime scene isn't here. Well, I guess it doesn't, but it's just like it could mean that. Ah, I see what you're saying. Ah, because of this, the body was transported, and therefore, it didn't yeah. have to be here. Objection. Okay. It would appear that you did not have all the information needed after all. And what does that mean? I found a nice piece of evidence just before I was forced to stop investigating. A piece that proves that the body was moved from a different location. Oh, I forgot this thing. The killer used a suitcase to move the victim's body. Meaning that there, the real scene of the crime is not this lounge after all. Now who's the one rashly jumping to conclusions? Excuse me? All you did was find this piece of cloth inside the suitcase. That doesn't prove that the body was moved. It could be that the killer simply chose that suitcase as a good place to hide the cloth. I expected you would come to that conclusion. It would seem that I can't escape that easily. You should know better than that. A von Karma is perfect in every way. Ah, but did you know that the killer definitely wheeled the suitcase around at some point? As if there is proof of that. Where is Even the though Emily pointed it out, session one immediately as soon as the fucking investigation team was found is a... Yeah. Where is the proof that the suitcase was moved around? Well... Be it's, the it's it's the it's the footprints because there was a wheel trail. Oh shit! <clears throat> I spilled grape juice in front grape of the elevator. Juice in the front of the elevator. Yeah, that's right. I read your line. Eat it. Fucking this hole. Yeah, I'd like to draw your attention to this area here. When the evidence has proved that the killer dragged the suitcase through here. Really? It's, it's, it's the wheel. <laughs> this mark here. Wouldn't you say that it looks suspiciously like tracks from two wheels? I suppose. Further, there is also grape juice residue on the wheels of the suitcase. This means that the suitcase containing the victim's body definitely passed through here. 
I suppose this means that the killer did move the victim's body from somewhere else. I'm glad that you've come to your senses. Not so fast. This still doesn't put you in the clear. Not by a long shot. Francisco's Logic Part 2. You prepared yourself and acquired the piggy bank before the plane hit that turbulence. And then you waited for the victim in the lounge where you beat him to death. Then, while you were in the elevator with the victim's body stuffed into the suitcase, the plane hit that patch of turbulence and out flew the body from within the suitcase. With no way out, you hastily put the suitcase back where you had taken it from and pretended to be the discoverer of the body. It was a self-report, if you will. <clears throat> Not a bit of bad logic for something you thought of on the fly. Just what are you insinuating? That I will show you exactly how flawed your logic is. No matter how strong of a face you put on, not even you can hide your fears from me. I'll expose the flaws in her logic by one fell swoop. Won't be satisfied until I've exposed every suspicious nook and cranny. I won't be satisfied. It's the Edgeworth way. And how do you suppose I was able to take the piggy bank out of this play cage? As we recall, the case was locked. That's easy. If the case was locked, you simply had to hit the glass. Like this. Ugh. You've shattered my heart of glass. So she wants to talk about the in-flight shop and the Mr. iFly bank, does she? That takes care of how you obtained the murder weapon. Can you imagine if someone didn't get the pun on iFly and just kept calling it Mr. Ifly? <laughs> so you probably could just nip this in the bud with the glass dot on the shelf. But we can still yeah. read all the dialogue. If you want. You just want more Francisco, don't you? I thought kind there wasn't of any of the victim's blood found in the lounge. I mean, yes, I usually, do. Usually, I don't go through all the presses, but I, I want more Francisco. <laughs> no, I thought you'd say that. What? Did you think I wouldn't have noticed? I think you just found a way to cleverly hide the blood splatter in the lounge by accidentally <clears throat> spilling a grape juice on top of it. Are you accusing me of tampering with the crime scene now? We'll see, won't we? The forensic scientists are hard to work on that as we speak. And... What do you propose I did after that? So I put the victim's body into the suitcase and then, where was I headed, Francisca? Where did I go? Where did I go to, Francisca Jew? We're bringing it to first class, where you could safely keep an eye on it. We're talking about this thing, you know. I'd hardly call it discreet or ordinary. <laughs> Annoying brat. Well then, you were intending to leave it inside the elevator. But unfortunately for you, a wrench was thrown into your plans. Because... Okay. You've experienced turbulence on a flight before. Of course, many times. You get used to it after a while. The patch we hit was especially rough, and I passed out briefly, but only for a second. Good thing it was only for a sec, sir. It would have been bad if you had really blanked out. Yes, indeed. Unfortunately, blanking out is exactly what's got me in this mess in the first place. <clears throat> nice. I'm there back. we go. That At least it happened mid-line, so it was easy to tell. <laughs> yeah. Uh, also, I forget that every time it does do it, <clears throat> it auto-displays Discord as the top thing on my screen. So it, it's ah. pretty easy to tell. Uh, screen share. Yes. Uh, can, can you try speaking that line again? Did, did I bug out or what? Yeah, you bugged out pretty hard. That's enough of your idle chatter. I'm not through with you yet, Miles Edgeworth. There you go. Okay. Hmm. If I really were a criminal, do you think I would be so easily caught? You are certainly in the middle of being caught right now. No. I have to find a contradiction faster. I won't have much of my own hide left to save. I have to say, you are looking rather caught right now. And I'll tell you exactly what you did after that. You loitered around at the lounge. You know, when, when she did the whip before it cut to Edgeworth, I, like, in instinctively, I got my throat ready to do Gumshoe's voice. Just because it's just the assumption. Is yeah. It's just going to be Gumshoe. 
She's an equal opportunity whipper. She is it's just gumshoe. Usually. It's mostly just gumshoe. And I don't think she's ever whipped, like, Pearly or someone like that. Well, no, she wouldn't whip a child. I didn't pretend to be anything. I really was the first to discover the victim's body. I suppose that's true. <clears throat> so then, you were yielding to my statement. Now be foolish. I still insist that you are the killer, but... In that sense, you really were the first to discover the body to be dead. Wow, she is like going full, full like Reddit, like like a redditor, like little mm, technically. No matter what I say, she seems dead set on making me out to be the killer. The logic is reasonably sound, and the large majority of it reflects the truth. This is exactly how she prosecuted in the games, though. I know. I... But there is one point about it that is not quite right. Like far be it from me to compare her to someone like. Fucking Naruto Sand Machine. And his his method, which is just balls asinine. Honestly, he does make more sense later in the game, but I think honestly part of it is just like the fucking like the second trial isn't gonna be the hardest trial. That's fair. <clears throat> but usually the second trial is where they show off the intimidation of the prosecutor, and that was just not oh. it. Don't get me wrong, he's he's not the best prosecutor. I, I, I'm defending him, I'm not defending him that much. <laughs> yeah. I would say he's probably the weakest prosecutor. Honestly, I could understand it if somebody preferred him over um, Clavier, but that's about it. The only reason you could prefer him is because he's more intimidating, but Clavier's just such a chill guy. No, I think I mean like I mean I mean yeah for like a, for like based on chapter two you probably prefer Clavier. I'm talking about like. From the perspective of having played the whole game, I could yeah. see somebody preferring him over Clavier. I might. I don't know. I don't really think about it that hard. Uh, I guess the display case. Hey, isn't look. Really... Hey, look. You can actually see the moment. That her heart rips right out of her chest. <laughs> and now, the fact that you took this piece of evidence into account in your testimony is to be commended. New legal prowess is something certainly to be feared. Evidence and logic. Essential tools that those who would stand in a courtroom must learn to master. But what if there was a fake piece of evidence thrown into the mix? A fake? This Mr. Ifly piggy bank is just such fake. It is not the real murder weapon. What? The timing of when the bank was taken from the shop is important, and it was taken after the turbulence had occurred. But then, what about the blood on the bank? What do you make of that? I assume it was added after the murder, when the killer was fabricating this weapon. Looking at it this way, the killer basically did three things after the turbulence. After exiting the elevator, The killer brought the suitcase to the shop and left it there. Then the killer proceeded to poke up the bank from off of the floor. And took it to fabricate a fake murder weapon by hitting the victim on the head. Finally, the victim's wallet was planted on my personage, in my pocket to be precise. Everything was done so that it would be framed for the murder of Mr. Ockby Hicks. You there? Yes, ma'am. Other than this piggy bank, was there anything else resembling a murder weapon found? Yeah, well, we didn't find anything in this lounge or in the shop that could be used as one, ma'am. Most of the items that could have been used were broken during turbulence. The remaining items all tested negative for any trace of blood. Let's see. Well, Miles Edgeworth, it appears your stall tactics are at an end. But it's possible that it's just hidden somewhere, sir. Yes. If the criminal had wanted to hide the weapon in a safer place, I think the weapon would have been hidden in the same <clears throat> place. Bloody cloth. Exactly what I was thinking. Because the cloth was hidden inside the suitcase, it signals to me that the killer... Has not... Which means that the real murder weapon is either still in the murderous personage. Uh, Miles Edgeworth, just a moment. <laughs> or is still at the real crime scene. 
there's one more possibility. And that would be? That the piggy bank is in fact the real weapon. But didn't we just... Let me finish. The killer took the bank out from <clears> the display <throat> case before the turbulence. By opening the lock on the display case door. And it was at that time that the glass pane in the door was bro broken. I'd say that's a perfectly reasonable line of reasoning, wouldn't you? Let's see, so that means that the killer had the key to the display case. Francisco, the person you're talking about. So fast, I'm not finished. The person I'm talking about also committed another sin. She tricked the captain. He granted you permission to conduct your investigation. Yes, it is the sin of lying. <clears throat> Speaking of which, I recall that you also wished to speak with her. Yes. Very well. Permission granted. But only if I can sit in on your interrogation. Do we understand each other? Yes, Gumshoe, stand here. Uh, but who's gonna whip... Who's gonna be the whip target? Alright, come with, Gumshoe. I have no intention of interrogating her. But you are welcome to accompany me if you so wish. This Tenero is in the flight attendant's room. Let's move. Wow. Oh. I've forgotten how to use my legs, Edgeworth. <laughs> yeah, hurry up and solve the bird already. Do you not know how I'm supposed to have my recargo returned to me? Could you please be patient just a little longer, Mr. LeBlanc? Hurry up and solve it like a strike of thunder. It's as fast as lightning, and believe me, I could if I would. Miss Tenero is in the flight attendant's room. Let's move. Did I just say I could if I would? Man, I just pulled a LeBlanc. Yeah, good shit. That blue door over there leads to the flight attendant's room. It's like, you fucking idiot. <laughs> Alright, let's go have a good look and see. Corner yes, her. where I killed him. <clears throat> so you're the one that poked around inside this plane without the captain's permission? Hmm. Do you want to take her over so you have lines other than Edward? Or no. No, it's okay. Okay. Deviating from the flight attendant's manual is very unbecoming, you know? I doubt that Gumshoe's going to talk much. Yeah, that's fair. His dialogue goes way down when Francisca's in the scene. What were you hoping to accomplish by doing that? I... I... Mr. Nero. Uh, Mr. Edgeworth, you're here too? Can you please help us and shed some light on why you did what you did? Right. What the <laughs> fuck? <Come on. laughs> you fucking asshole. I said I wasn't going to interrogate you. Alright, have at her, Francisca. It's not a bad way to handle the situation if there's any old case, but this isn't. Between you and Miss Von Karma, who's better at their job? Oh, there's no comparison to be made, Detective Don. Pretty easy to tell who sleeps in which bunk just by looking. <laughs> Actually. <laughs> yeah. I'm almost certain that the well kept one up top belongs to Miss Tenero. Yeah, this bottom one is a giant mess. You sloven squalid squandrel of a man. You dare to scrutinize a woman's bed and invade her privacy. Yeah. <sighs> there are some things in life best kept to yourself, Detective. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's uh, what's 100% her bed. Yeah, Jesus. There's all this junk inside these boxes. There's no rhyme or reason to any of it. That's our lost and found, Mr. Edgeworth. Gold crowns and swords and necklaces. It's like a treasure trove in here, sir. The fact that these things were left on the plane implies they were carried on to it in to begin with. Something tells me it's time for iFly to send its metal detectors out for repairs. <laughs> I feel like they made the scene before they realized that was like a, a like a weird. <laughs> so these are the attendants' lockers, huh? Let's hurry up and examine them, sir. Why must men always be so rude? Besides, who exactly gave you permission to search through the attendants' lockers? Wait, detective. It oh, would be uncouth of us to look into a woman's locker without her permission. Yeah, I guess so. Plus, I feel this murderous draft, and I can sense a whip not far behind.
damn it! Bye. <laughs> Come on, dude. We'll never finish the game. <laughs> I didn't think it would turn me around over there. She stay up. <laughs> okay. Oh, go on. Let's hear our troublesome Let's attendant out. Let's hear our out. In due time, I do have one thing I'd like to ask you. Yes? Do you plan to continue using that whip for the foreseeable future? <laughs> of course. I've wrangled many a testimony out of people thanks to it. Yeah, and probably a whole ton of yelps, too. Oh. I'm willing to bet that the majority of them came from you, detective. Why'd you lie about receiving the captain's permission like that? Da, 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 da. Because I didn't think I'd be able to get his permission. What do you mean? The captain, he only has ears for Cammy. I spoke with the captain a little earlier myself. He definitely seems to be rather taken with Miss Meal. I, you know what I just thought of? Hmm. That turbulence was particularly dangerous. Particularly. That means unusually so. Yes. Almost like it wasn't turbulence. Uh, Almost like it was the captain going to perform a murder for a bit while he let the plane free fall for a little while. That's fucking insane. I think it's more likely he's just an accomplice for Cammy, but maybe... Maybe it's that. That's fucking nuts, though. If that's, I mean, I know that planes have some form of like, There's like in the modern era, there's yeah. some form of autopilot. But but if we turned on autopilot, that would make him incredibly suspicious, and that would make him, you know, a suspect. Yeah. Well, I don't know if they have like a fucking, you know, log of that though. Anyways. They'd be able to check when he turned on autopilot. The control deck would be able to check that. And if we turn on autopilot for just, like, the window of time for the murder, that's really suspicious. It still could be, that, but I don't know. It, it def there's a, definitely something weird with the turbulence, though, yeah. In whichever case, I do think that the other is at least partially involved. Yeah, yeah. But we'll find out. I did read the one. Okay, then. Yes, and on top of that, I had mistakenly accused Mr. Edgeworth of being the killer. I wanted to make amends. In that case, please allow me to thank you for what you did. Thanks to you, I was able to clear myself of all charges. Really? You were able to prove your innocence? Oh, thank goodness. Miss Tenero, is it? There's one more thing I'd like to ask you. You were in the in-flight shop just before the turbulence, weren't you? Please answer honestly. Yes, I was. And why were you there? Well, I... Hmm. By the sudden hesitation, Francisca seems to have struck a nerve. Cammy only seems to have eyes for the captain. Why doesn't well, she I... have eyes for me? Oh. All I did was go check up on the shop like I always do. You're saying it was for work, then? Yes, I'm in charge of the shop, so I have to keep an eye on it. I don't have any reason to go there otherwise. After your visit to the shop, you paid a visit to this room, correct? Yes, I came back to freshen up and adjust my makeup. I'm sorry, but there isn't much else to tell. Hmm. Mr. Nero claims to have been have no reason other than duty to go to the shop. Is that all there is to it? Maybe I should ask her about something. Um, what even... I'm sorry. I don't know how to answer you. As a professional flight attendant, I'm a failure. Oh, no! She must be worn out from the long questioning session she just went through. Um, is it on the next page? Hey, look. How about her suitcase she made? Please take a look at this for me, Mr. Nero. Oh, that suitcase. Yes, about the suitcase. You were the one who designed it, correct? I think I figured out something else about it. 
The suitcase is inordinately large. That's the reason you went to the shop, isn't it? But there's nothing you won't find out eventually, is there? Would you please tell me more about the suitcase? Yes, um, I... Well, I... I was interested in seeing how the suitcases I had designed were selling. I you know that as a service professional, I'm not supposed to care. And I really wanted to know. And I was glad to see that it was the last one there. The last one there. Interesting. So that gives more credit to our... Our Bedgeworth theory. So you're saying Mr. Nero was the... That the one suitcase in question was the last one? Yes, they're just so popular, they're practically flying off the shelves. I'm sorry to tell you this, but... <laughs> That's not exactly the impression I got. They were 50% off, and there were only two of them made. The one in the shop is most definitely the last one. Uh, we're currently looking at the suitcase. Really? Then I guess we sold all of them. Thank you very much for taking the last one. I didn't say anything about buying it. Then say you'll buy it! <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't. But why? I'm afraid that Wright might dump me if I told him Everyone's I bought Everyone's getting it. whipped by, by fucking Francisco, like, in two seconds. <laughs> oh, she wasn't whipped. That's just the face she made. Oh, oh no, you're I'm saying, saying that they will. Got it. Yeah. That's a really good face, too. Yeah, it is. Unfortunately, it cuts off her hair. I think it'd go great with your complexion, Mr. Edwards. It really suits you. What's my complexion? Constantly vomiting. I guarantee it personally as a service professional. Um, well, that is... How should I put this? It's hideous. <laughs> what? <laughs> hmm, maybe yeah, that was a bit too direct. Moving on. <laughs> my <laughs> issue with the suitcase isn't the sun. It's the number of them remaining. R remaining? There were two suitcases in the in-flight shop when I investigated it. Two? But that's impossible. I'm sure there was only one. Looks like her story has generated quite the contradiction. When I left the shop, I'm positive there was only one suitcase left. Something is amiss here. What could be the meaning of this inconsistency? Hmm. By the way, Miss Tunero, what is one of those suitcases doing here? Um, that's... I thought you said there was only one left. That, that one is, um, it's mine. I've used it for a very long time now. She's used it for a long time? I think not. Miss Tunero, I'd appreciate it if you wouldn't lie to me. Excuse me? I bought my own merchandise so it would look like it was doing better. I don't believe for even one second that you used this for a very long time. Because it still has the sales tag on it. Yeah. Or, I guess, I don't know if that is the sales tag. It might be just the ID no, tag. I, I a lot of suitcases it, have that. But I'm guessing it's the sales tag. It is. Tell me, Mr. Nero, is it also your habit to keep the price tag pristine on your suitcase? I guess it does oh. look like there's a barcode on it. Yep. What is the meaning of this? Why would you lie about a suitcase? Despite having faith in her design sense, the sales numbers made her cry bitter tears. The truth has become increasingly clear to me. Hmm. Bitter tears. Hmm. <laughs> Mr. Nero, yes. I think I understand. I know what you are trying to hide. Now that the suitcase was originally in, in flight shop, she purchased the other one. Seeing as how the price tag is still on the suitcase, one can only assume it was on the floor for sale at the shop. And the person who bought this suitcase was you. The fucking profiles, like just like yeah, there's the, like, that loser. Just like one, like two through four, like they, they they're not. That's the like best. he has eight chins. That's just great. Like, she looks good here, but zoom out, like, just... Yeah, you know. Hey, they're the same age. Oh, yeah. Dick. He's 62 years old. Alright, come on, present. <laughs> anyway, uh... Present LeBlanc! It was you, wasn't it, Mr. Nero? 
I hate to say this, but this suitcase that you designed, it hasn't sold very well, has it? Um... So how poorly this design was that you poured your heart into selling, and were deeply hurt. That's why you wanted to make it look like it was selling by buying it yourself. Isn't that right? Then, the reason you went to the shop and came back here was... I I'm sorry. All I really have is my job. I, I was overjoyed when my design was chosen. I thought that maybe... Maybe I'd finally accomplished something. But the suitcase didn't sell. It's because of the design, isn't it? Well, because it's as you put it. Hideous. I can't say they chose a great place in which to sell them, either. We weren't selling a single one, and they were just sitting there collecting dust. It felt so bad seeing them there, day in and day out. So I decided to buy one for every flight I worked. <laughs> you buy one every single time you work a flight. I see. So in order to keep your resolution, you went and bought one today as well. Yes, and here's my receipt for that purchase. Hmm. This receipt is clearly time-stamped 5.40 a.m. Well. And she saw another one. At that time. Yeah. Thus. The murder was actually in a 20-minute interval. Not in an hour-long interval. Mm -hmm. The truth is, there's still a bunch of them left unsold. I'm planning to scrap the remaining ones at the end of the flight. Mr. Nero, where are the other suitcases? They should all be down in the cargo hold. In the suitcase the killer used... Could very well have come from the cargo hold. Uh, Mr. Edgeworth, you don't think the killer used one of my suitcases to... Yes, I do. The killer used one of your inordinately large beloved suitcases. To move the victim's body. Look how happy he is about this. He's I love crushing women's like, dreams. Like he's literally like he 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 checks like am I r slash am I the asshole like five hours a day. <laughs> just just like he he posts on purpose and he gets validated when people say yes you are an asshole Edgeworth. It's and like, then and then he yes. and then whenever he's when no no no. no. It, he's he's not he wants to the not the asshole post whenever they say he's the asshole he deletes the post. <laughs> <laughs> but but he wants to be an asshole. It's so obvious. Look at this guy. No, I mean he wants to be an asshole, but he doesn't want to be called one. He wants to be vindicated. Uh, how could they? Those suitcases were meant to be faithful partners to our passengers on their trips. Instead, I made it just large enough to store a fucking human corpse inside of them. Yeah, um, too big. That's all I ever wished for them to be. There's not even, like, side pockets or anything convenient. It's just a big, no, flat it's fucking... No, it's a giant fucking... <laughs> Mr. Nero, is there any other way to get to the cargo hold other than the elevator? The only other way is just through that door there. What about security? That door has no special lock installed, because it's just out of this room. You need a special key card that only crew members have access to. Gammy did it. Slash the pilot. Which means that the culprit is someone who can enter this room. Eliminating the passengers and leaving only crew members as a potential sub sus Are you okay, Mr. Edgeworth? No. I can't believe it. Yes, Francisca. Going on these wild goose chases, you're a disgrace to the Von Karman name. And what do you mean by that? The suitcase came from the cargo hold. That fact alone tells the whole story. Yes, which is why I add that the culprit must be a crew member who used their key card. Miles Edgeworth! You're proposing that the killer rode the elevator from the cargo hold, correct? Yes, that's the only realistic possibility. That other attendant, Miss McNeil, I asked her earlier and she had this to say. Is this guy inform information out of Miss Meal? In order to make the elevator go down to the cargo hold, a different key card is required. A different one? Yes, and the only person who holds that particular card is you, Miss Rhoda Tenero. And only you. Ah! Uh... What? Is that true, Miss Tenero? Yes, I keep that key card in my locker at all times. Why do you keep it in a place that it can be easily taken? Could you please show because us that card right I'm now? Not, 
Because I'm not confident. Yes, hold on. Because I wanted to get stolen and I want my suitcase to get used for something. So if it's used for a murder, that's good something. Uh, I I don't believe it. What's wrong? Key card, it's it's gone. Wow, what a surprise. <laughs> Very clever. Pretending that your card was stolen when in fact you were just trying to hide it from us. You really thought this, sir? Well, wait, it's not like that. You can tell us all about what it's like to at the station. Officer, arrest this woman. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Edgeworth. Such a fucking asshole. <laughs> not gonna say anything. What's wrong? There's disbelief written all over your face. I'm Siska, I know that you were the lead investigator on this case, however. Hold it! Don't even think about wasting any more of my time. Mm. You know the rules as well as I do. Please don't say that phrase. <laughs> Evidence speaks louder than words. Even if this isn't a courtroom, that basic tenet still applies. I intend to investigate the cargo hold now. What will you do, Miles Edgeworth? I intend to do likewise. I can't wait for the cargo hold to be nothing but, like, fucking thousands of bags. <laughs> of just suitcases. Yeah, let's, let's, let's call it here for the night, I think. Sure. That's a good spot to end it. Yeah, I think so, too. Next time on Phoenix, right? Look what we have to look forward to. Yeah. Now, I'm going to push you off of here, Gumshoe. Any final words? Oh, I... Well, I can't uh, say I will be missing much food. Instant noodles. Cut pay. Maggie Bird! I'll cut your pay to zero forever, permanently. <laughs> I'll cut your pay to hell. <laughs> oh, this game's good. Yeah. Like, for a trial to... Or for, for an episode to... Um, segment of like a nice attorney game it's getting a lot more smiles out of me than it usually does and not just because of von karma so it's, it's a lot of because of von karma and also cammy it's, it's well you know it's not just those it's also edward and, and it's also me no yeah i sure like, i feel like i'm uh, i'm one of the big parts of this game it it really just isn't Man, I, I, I come and do the voice and everything. I mean, come on. I'm 62 please. years old over here. Oh, you want to buy my art? Please leave my crime scene. It's very, very beautiful. Please, please leave my crime scene. Yeah, would you like me to come in instead? Like, <laughs> I forced that. Yeah, um, I don't know why they decided to have those characters there. That was probably a mistake. Yeah. Just sort of random ass cameo. Probably just some placeholders that the developers forgot to get rid of. <laughs> no, I think they probably put them there and they were like, oh, that kind of looks like this guy. Fuck it. We don't have any better flavor text. I'm pretty sure it was intentional. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. Who would intentionally reference that character? Exactly. I feel like it's one of the most regrettable parts of the original. I should have just, like, a disgusting character, but I'm worried that all three of you will hate him and just not want to play it with him. Yeah, I mean, it, yeah. The thing is, is, like, you can make a character who's, like, visually unappealing, it's just don't fucking be, like, like, anytime in any of these games there's, like, a character who's visually unappealing, they're also just a fucking weirdo. And it's like, it's fine, and, like, it, just don't make him a weirdo. I don't know, I feel like, uh, Nick Powers is also just, like, he's kind of like hairy well, like some kind of like that's the thing is he's visually unappealing but he's not a weirdo <laughs> he's, he's just well, i mean he is a weirdo but he's also nice also he's, also he's will powers um yeah will Power. yeah but i mean he's when i nice. say weirdo like sorry i got distracted because somebody posts in a reddit post it's edgeworth and clavier's outfit <laughs> oh, that's neat let's take a look at that that's pretty good oh yeah yeah, right? <laughs> it's like, damn. Hello there. Yeah, no, anyway, no. what we were talking about? Oh, yeah, Nick <laughs> Powers. Yeah, who cares about yeah, him? Yeah, no, <laughs> well, He's officially unappealing, but he's not like a fucking freak. 
put that, but um, what's his name from you know the, the, the cameo here is. I have no idea what Especially his name on is. Weird, I, I don't want to know. <laughs> Just call him Bug. Bug. Yeah. Anyway, that's that's investigations for the day. <laughs>